Fix my mic. So, Lion. Again, again. How are you today? Oh, I'm sorry. We're good. Good. How you doing? How's everything going? Doing good. Doing good. I'm just very happy that you could make time for me today. That's very appreciated. Always, um, always. I know I already told you about like the idea, but I think I'll just make a quick introduction. So this is just like the beginning of a hopefully a very long series where I'll be interviewing black professionals, successful black professionals, um, just so other people can get an idea and get inspired by their journey and so on and so forth. So I think <laughs> it's just gonna be it's just gonna be a few questions. It shouldn't be longer than maybe half an hour. Okay. Um, and then bad. yeah, we're just gonna try and keep it like just a conversation rather than like interview stuff. So I like that. Like that. Yeah, we can start by, it's going to feel like, like an interview question, but tell me about yourself, just in general. Oh, okay, okay, should I, should I give them my government name? I'm not big on giving my government name. Um, <laughs> no, I know so, you can give them your, your fake names, aka Lion, aka Sue Dragon, uh, no, was that, was that uh, one of them? No, 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 no. So I'm Albert Emmanuel Francois. Some people call me as some people know me as Bebeto, some people know me as T Lion, some people just call me Lion. I went to, to high school in St. Louis in Haiti. And then in 2015, we graduated uh, with the school in New York because I'm born in New York but raised in Haiti. So, a little perspective for people that don't know. But then we came back to New York for school, for college. Did my four years, got my bachelor's. Graduated in 2019. Now it's 2022 and I'm working. A little thing about me is everybody knows me as the hot headed kid, uh, the straightforward kid, but I That's never hold true. back. I never hold back. I always say what I got to say when I got to say it. So That's true. That's true. That's why I thought you'd be like a, a good candidate for this series because I need honest people to give like honest answers. I think it's cool to have like people that are going to tell you, you know. Hey, here's what I'm I did. Not. Here's what works. Here's what doesn't. Work. You just said that you graduated in 2019. Yeah. Um, and working, and now it's 2022. So, what what's your current position? Uh, let's let's just give him a rundown. So, I went to Manhattan College in Bronx, Riverdale. Mm -hmm. Graduated in 2019 in finance. So, obviously, my goal is to be in that aspect of you know finance, you know, corporate world of of America. Mm -hmm. So um, as of right now, I'm a relationship analyst for a private lending company, mm -hmm. which is has to do with real estate loans and mortgages. Again, if anybody wants details, I, I, can, I can go deeper, you let me know. Mm -hmm. But it's, uh, I graduated and I since then I've been trying to work on my background. Mm -hmm. Why? Because that's, you know, that's the goal. I, I want to be that advisor. I want to be that person that that, that could bring wealth to a different crowd of people that never had it before. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to get into it too quick because I know you have like a step steps with yeah. your interview. Yeah. But yes, right right now I'm working as a as a relationship analyst for a private lending company. Can't lie to you, I love it. Yeah. I've done many other jobs before getting to this one. Yeah. So it's 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 a step. It's a step. Yeah. So it's good. Yeah. yeah. I know you kind of touched on it already. Um, with um, what you want to do with like, you know, bringing wealth to, you know, um, yeah. I guess minorities. But I think it's important that also I ask you to define what you think success is, because okay. I'm coming to this by saying, hey, I'm going to interview successful black professionals, okay. but success okay. can look different for everybody. So I think it's important that you define it for yourself before we go. Deeper. Okay, so. So um, success. I don't know how I want to approach this. So I probably want to approach this like a little bit unorthodoxly because I'm mm -hmm. going to skip a lot of questions you probably already have. Mm -hmm. But um, success for me is really not what I mean by knowledge. I'm not saying like you have to be the smartest person in the room. I'm not saying you have to get all A's. I'm not saying you have to you have to be the, the number one in everything. You could be the best, but you don't have to be the number one in everything. So mm -hmm. to me, success is really figuring out who I am, mm -hmm. being the best possible human being, being the best possible version of me, mm -hmm. just me, and also 
being able to say at the end, I had fun. Yeah, that's yeah. I think that's a great way of seeing success, no. honestly. You said you went to Manhattan College, right? And you said that you majored in finance. Um, so what yeah. pushed you to pick that major? Um, I mean, if you know me, you know I was always into business. Like even at, even like when I was in my from high school. Yeah, even before that, like I wanna say like in the third grade was when I started. I used to bring stuff like Lunchables or like um, Yu-Gi-Oh cards. So I used to buy these things here in the States and then go back to school. That was really like, I don't know, that's, that's where I get my passion from. So I was always into business. I guess I, I get that from my family, my grandma, my mom. So I, again, I was always into business. And to be the funny thing is I, re, I never forgot this conversation. Uh, I was eight, so I have probably was in the third grade. Yeah. I told my mom, what do you want me to learn? And then when I go to college and she said, whatever you want, I said, what, what do you want me to learn? She goes, it doesn't matter what you learn as long as you're the best at it. Uh, I thought business administration was going to be my goal. And then um, somebody spoke to me. I think it was my aunt or somebody's friend said, if you're going to go into business, go for the highest level, go for finance. Mm. Well, what's finance? Like, I don't know what finance is. Like, I don't want to, I just want to do business. I just want to open my business, run business. And then she told me to go for finance. And I said, okay, like, it's not like something I can't do. Mm-hmm. So I, I did. So I ended up actually getting accepted to Manhattan. They had a great finance program. They had, I actually got played. I thought they had a volleyball program. They did, but it was only for women. It didn't say that. So that's how they got me. Funny thing is about this whole finance thing. The moment I realized that I had like something, a calling in this field is when I was about to, I'm getting, I'm graduating. I realized there was probably two or three of us that were of, they were black in finance. Mm-hmm. And then when I'm about to sit down, I realized, oh my God, everybody ran away from this field. Yeah, they, 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 they ran away from it. And I, the reason why I'm saying they ran away from it is because when I tell people, yeah, I did finance, like, oh, money, man, big numbers. I'm like, dude, it's yeah. just like every other class, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, It's like it's like accounting mixed with management, mixed with all the other business classes. But everybody used to be like, oh, you're a big money, man. Yeah. And then I never realized it until I sat down. And I was like, oh, my God, this is the reason why there's this gap. Because even for me, it did affect me at some point mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The class was speaking language that I couldn't understand. Mm-hmm. And I'm not talking English. I'm talking like they're speaking fi- finance. They're speaking mm-hmm. a language that I can't understand. They're yeah. reading the they're reading charts. They're, they're looking at the Bloomberg terminal. And I'm like this. And, and I legit told my professor, like, I can't do this. Yeah. Like, I don't understand anything. I feel I feel f- frustrated. Yeah. And she goes, she she was Professor Anavi. I never forgot that. She also made me great. Um, she told me. You're in this class, right? Yes. You're working like everybody else. I said, yes. She goes, okay, keep reading about it. Don't stop. Keep going, keep going. And then come back to me two months later. Yeah. Two months later, I'm calling shots. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm making, because we have an investment club. You know what I'm saying? Man in college. Represent. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah. I, I always have my little economics and finance society thing on me. Yeah. So um, three, uh, Two months, I want to say two months later, I did come back to her and I'm like, I, I started to understand it. But once you understand this, you 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 realize a different world around you, mm-hmm. you know? And mm-hmm. then that's when I realized, again, that a lot of us, again, not just not just Blacks, but a lot of us minorities, mm-hmm. we want we want a lot, but we don't take that jump to, to understand what it takes to get a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's, it's very important to have that support system, you know, what you just yeah. described. When you were like, hey, I can't do this anymore. Yeah, and then, I couldn't. you know, that professor was there to tell you, hey, you know, you yeah. can't do this. This, yeah. you know, follow these steps. It's And this is probably why you were one of the few Black yeah. people to graduate. Because they, the others probably didn't have that support system. And which is like the whole idea of starting this, this series so that we can be a support system for other Black yeah. people going through these same issues. So. Yeah, I'm glad you had a professor like this. So to come back more to like, you know, present day, um, you say you're an analyst, right? Could you yeah. kind of like um, describe what a typical day 
looks like for you right now? I can give you two types of typical days. A typical good day and a typical bad day. A typical great day is where I get 10 to 20 calls a day where somebody's going to be like, hey, I just sent you an email. Can you check that out? Somebody sends me a file. I look through the file. Again, this is about real estate loans. So I have to, the file basically is the property with property information that I need. Mm -hmm. Take these numbers, plug them in, see if, if the value works. I have to analyze the, the property itself, see mm -hmm. the area. I need to know the zone. I need to know like everything about it, basically. Mm -hmm. So the whole concept of my job and the day-to-day, -day, and this is still a good day, is to do that finance, that finance thing I learned, which is analyzing. Mm -hmm. They send you that file. You have to be able to look at it from top to bottom, and then from left to right, and then from in and out. And then you mm -hmm. got to be able to tell yourself, okay, this makes sense. Or why is that person looking for this amount of money when the property is worth this amount? So mm -hmm. that, you know, you got to, you got to do all of that in one yeah. shot. And mm -hmm. then you have to, you have to price the loan. Mm -hmm. And again, I, I don't want to go too deep into details because I don't want to confuse anybody, but you have to price the loan and you have to be able to present it. And as a relationship analyst, you also got to keep that conversation going where mm -hmm. they'll come back and be like, why did you give me a, a 4.5 rate? I want mm -hmm. something lower. And mm -hmm. you got to be able to explain, sir, based off this information you provided me and based off my calculations on this, this is what's best for the scenario. We can mm -hmm. work with this. I'll try to work on the numbers a little bit more. So mm -hmm. it's really, for me, it's really a lot of, it's weird because it's a lot of analyze, analyzing and making decisions. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And two things that I like. Yeah, no. and just to clarify, I mean, because I know, but like, you're mm -hmm. not a real estate agent. You're a relationship analyst, which are two I'm different. I'm a relationship, yes. So yep. the yep. Rela real estate agent, uh, let's say a broker, they broker the deal, meaning they're a connector. They they find the, the buyer, the seller mm -hmm. of the house, and mm -hmm. they find another buyer, the seller, or mm -hmm. the lender, whoever's lending the money, the investor. Mm -hmm. So they they do the, the work of, you know, chatting and talking. I'm the guy behind the scenes that you don't know exists. Okay. I'm the guy behind the scenes that's my broker is calling me. He goes, yo, I have this property in New York, a uh, four bedroom, blah, blah, blah. And like, okay, tell your client, we can give him a, this amount of money, this amount of this at, at this rate. Okay. So I, I'm the guy behind the scenes that's mm -hmm. calculating the numbers that are doing them. The, Cause my broker doesn't have the, we work in 42 States. Mm -hmm. So some of our brokers are doing deals in Florida while they're in New York, mm -hmm. right? They don't have the time to go to the place and analyze it. Now thanks to technology, this is yeah. what I do. Yeah. So, um, no, I don't get paid commission, guys. Relax. <laughs> uh, so I'm the guy behind the scenes that you didn't know existed. So my know. next question was going to be about, like, if you feel like you're using what you learned and college in your daily life, but I think the answer to that is yes. Um, yeah, even so in high just, school. Yeah, even in high school, you're still using. Even in, in high school. Yeah. I, 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 you know how we are, we usually say, "Oh, why yeah, am I exactly. learning all this? Why am I like, yeah, yeah we're never gonna lose it." I remember, and I, kept, I lost that notebook like two years ago. I remember in like I believe junior year of high school, learning a bunch of uh, what's it, integrals and this and that, blah blah blah. blah Vlog built curves, but the limits. Like this is this is stupid. Yeah. Like, I'm never gonna use that. Nobody uses ABC in real life. Like, what? So Professor Hudson said, because he he perfectly forced us to have this notebook where he we took all the notes that he said, and mm -hmm. if you didn't have it, you're gonna have an F at the end of the year. So mm -hmm. eh, you know what? Yeah. Fuck it. You know. Yeah. So Professor Hudson said, this notebook that you have, you're gonna use this for life. Never lose it. I said, this man don't know what he's talking about. But for some reason, I never, I never threw it out. Mm -hmm. So senior, uh, junior year, senior year, kept it. Never threw it out. Now I'm about to leave. I'm going to come here. I'm here, obviously. First year, fly by. Easy, mm -hmm. smooth, mm -hmm. too easy. Second year, easy. I'm taking two math class in one semester. I'm killing it. I'm like, yo, mm -hmm. just, I, just, I just did this a couple <laughs> months ago. Yeah. yeah. And then I'm like, and then I get to like my third year when I'm like, I'm doing serious stuff. Yeah. And then I'm confused. I'm like, I'm like irritated. I'm like, I'm like getting mad. I'm frustrated. And then I just 
felt something and said, yo, check your old notebook. You just don't understand it because, you know, you've been learning in a different language. Yeah. So I grabbed my, I had a, I had a briefcase. I grabbed my briefcase. I opened my full, I think they had my documents. Yeah. And then I pull out my notebook. Yeah. And I'm, I'm flipping through it. And I realized, I was like, holy shit. The shit that I was, the things that I was learning with Mr. Hartson is what I'm doing currently in finance. The language barrier is real. People may not yeah. understand that, but I, yeah. when I was when I was about to take my SATs, like, and that's a funny story. <laughs> I was taking a practice exam, a practice SAT, and then one of the questions was asking me because you know how you have to take like a practice before you actually start studying, just to kind of like see where you are. One of the questions was asking about the radius of something. <laughs> I had no idea what that was. I was like. What? what complicated math this we were talking about but they were just talking about the radius and i just couldn't like i didn't know what it was in french or creole and then so a lot of these things you just have to know what they mean and then it becomes easier but yeah mm -hmm. the language barrier is actually the, the language barrier is very 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 serious and i was talking to one of my best friends about this jerry mm -hmm. no matter how hard you try this language is not yours so there will always be a gap. And to be honest with you, the more I read it, the more I understand it. And the more I understand it, I realize the, the, it's not that hard. Mm -hmm. But then I go back and I'm like, why was it so hard at that time? Mm -hmm. And then it's like myself saying, but you didn't know what this meant. So if you skip that step, if you skip that step, that first step, when you, you know, when you take English 101 or you take math 101 and then yeah. you don't take it seriously and then you just let it fall. Once you skip that step, you are going to have that gap forever because yeah. you're not going to know what these things mean. I think I'm going to like bundle the next two questions together because they kind of do go together. Um, okay. It's uh, so how has being black affected your career or if it affected it at all? And can you describe your work environment? So, like, does being black affect your career in general? And do you see, like, I guess, things in your work environment that are, you know, that are happening because you're black or or maybe not? Like, I just want to know your experience with it because I know everybody has a different experience with these things. So, you know me. I'm about vibes. I'm always chill. I'm always, I'm always in a good mood, right? Yeah. I... To be honest with you guys, I never noticed noticed that until I noticed it. When you're surrounded by a group of people that are, you know, they're genuine. Mm -hmm. By genuine, I mean it doesn't matter where you're from. It doesn't matter who you. They don't make you feel uncomfortable. So you forget. Mm -hmm. You forget. You don't notice. Mm -hmm. You think you're one of because again, I see myself as a human being. You see yourself as a human. Being, you think you're one of them. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, the world doesn't see you like that. And it's gonna happen when these factors hit and you're like, but why, why am I not getting this? Like mm -hmm. I'm, I'm as this as that, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. way more than this. And you're like, mm -hmm. it doesn't click. Cause you, mm -hmm. you didn't notice it. You were comfortable in your surrounding. And this is mm -hmm. me talking about myself. Mm -hmm. You were comfortable in your surroundings. You thought that because you had the status, you had the knowledge, you had the, the funds, you mm -hmm. had everything that you could just get it. Mm -hmm. You had the posture, you had the, you know, you had the yeah. language, yeah, 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 yeah. You and then you realize it after, because it's engraved in the system. It's it's yeah. deep into the system. So how it's has systemic. being black affected me? Yeah. How has being black affected me? It hasn't affected me to the point where it, it's gonna <clears throat> disturb my day, but mm -hmm. it's 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 affected me to the point where like it's on my mental now, mm -hmm. and it was never something that was on my mental. Mm -hmm. I never looked at people by their skin colors. Mm -hmm. And if you look at my friend group, you'll see that you'll see that my friend group is very diverse. It doesn't matter yeah. who you are. These pe these are people I connect with because of their characters, not mm -hmm. because of what they look like. I don't care about what they look like, to be honest with you. Yeah, I I'm not gonna harp on that, but yeah, it ha it did affect me. It did affect yeah. me. I I've never feared. I've never and this is me being a little bit political, but I've never feared wearing my hoodie in my life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've never feared wearing my. I've never feared. Like thinking that if I'm walking in the wrong time in the wrong spot, that something might happen to me and just me because it's me because of my skin color. I never thought mm -hmm. of that. Mm -hmm. And it, in my work life, the way I want to approach that, I'm not gonna even go to like how like bad the shit is around here. Mm -hmm. But in my work life, the way that affected me is 
like I told you the first time when I graduated, when I graduated mm -hmm. as, as we're all sitting down and let me show you rise up. If you're, if you're in finance, everybody rises up. Yeah. And you know me, I'm, I'm a little, you know, cocky. Yeah. I'm like, sit. Okay. Thank you. Finance students sit down and I'm sitting down and I'm looking around. I'm like, I'm like, like, holy shit. Yeah. There's only two black kids in this, in this whole class of finance. Yeah. And, and then I said to myself, who's going to be all these other black people? Yeah. And I said, who's going to tell these people that they need to open these couple of accounts and invest in these type of stocks? I was like, I was like, I'm just going to throw out a random name. I was like, Jimmy doesn't know about, uh, about Jean Baptiste. He doesn't understand that Jean Baptiste is in the house. Yeah, with his whole family. He's probably nice to Jean Baptiste. Yeah. You know, he's yeah. probably very genuine to him, but he doesn't understand that why doesn't yeah. Jean Baptiste have ten thousand mm -hmm. dollars in his in his See, portfolio right now? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. The portfolio. They're like, What? Yeah. You know, why doesn't Jean Baptiste just take uh, um ten dollars out of his paycheck every day and put it put it in the S P five hundred? Yeah. Jean Baptiste Jean can't Jean can't do that, bro. <laughs> Like I'm, I'm willing to work, work with like the dudes that work at my cafeteria. I'm, mm -hmm. I, my boy Luis that used to take out the trash. I took his number. I was like, "Yo, bro, when I get out of here, I'm about to, as if I was in prison." When I was like, "When I get out of here, <laughs> and I start working, give me your contact, bro. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you stuff. I'm gonna like put you on things because they don't yeah. know that it's it's make ten, make ten, spend two, save eight. They don't know yeah. that, yeah. dude. I didn't carry being black on me. Like I was mm -hmm. a human being. I didn't, I didn't give a fuck. Yeah. Okay. I, I I didn't I didn't feel like I had to say I'm the I'm the best black kid in finance in my school. No, bro, I'm the best I'm the best in finance in my school. Mm -hmm. That's how I felt like I had to speak. I don't have to put my color first. And I didn't realize it until I was here. Again, they made me feel it with my job. I couldn't understand and I again I want this people to know this part. I struggled a lot to get a job after graduation. Mm-hmm. To the point where I I'm, I have a strong will and a strong mental, mm -hmm. and that started to affect me. But it would affect me, and I'll be like, no, it's not possible because it mm -hmm. couldn't click. Mm -hmm. I would go to these interviews, do my research, do everything I need to do, dress up, proper speak. Like you can't not not love me in these interviews. But I was going mm -hmm. for the big positions, obviously. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was going for a paralegal in the middle of Manhattan, fifty-seven floor. Mm -hmm. Come on, bro. You, come on. You, you, you can't just come up here in the ladder like that. You know, you can't mm -hmm. just. I didn't realize it. Mm -hmm. and, and funny thing is, it's still happening to this day. It's just that to me, I, I decided to focus on my own route because I don't want to. Mm -hmm. If I keep focusing, if I keep looking back, I'm mm -hmm. going to slow. Or if I keep looking at the other person's uh, uh, side, I'm going to slow myself down. Yeah. My, resume, my resume is not immaculate in experience. Yeah. But when you look at my resume in terms of GPA, top, when you look at my resume in terms of skills, linguistic skills, uh, computer skills, top, I'm an asset, G. I know mm -hmm. I'm an asset. Mm -hmm. But people, I was being rejected left and right. You know what mm -hmm. I had to do? Mm -hmm. You know what I had to do after mm -hmm. college? Mm -hmm. I was working three jobs mm -hmm. just to pay my rent. I had no weekends. Okay? I'm yeah. waking up Saturday. I'm waking up. Sunday morning to go to work, my boys are still passed out on the couch, mm. drunk, drunk. Yeah, I'm. I'm. It used to, like I. We had the apartment at the time after graduation, so they used to. I'm walking on top on, over people like this. I'm mm. going to work. Ask me what my job was. What oh, one of those three jobs? Were. One of these jobs, I was working with my aunt. I was her assistant. Mm -hmm. I worked that two day, two days a week. Mm -hmm. I worked on Wednesdays and Thursdays. Mm -hmm. Right. The other job was a, a, a little gig that I have. What do I do? I There's an event happening. They call us. The staff comes in. You know, the staff helps. And the other thing I do is I have to stand there all day. Good morning. Good afternoon. Take your phone. Put it in a pouch. Lock it. Put it in a bag mm -hmm. or give it to hand it back to you. So I'm here. You have all these celebrities, all these rich people, all these people walking in. Good morning. How you doing? Minimum wage. Mm-hmm. Minimum wage. Yeah. Good morning. Good afternoon. Hi. How you doing? Token. Right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. my third job, you know what my third job was? And it was my favorite one. 
I worked at a food truck. I was yeah. selling food. Yeah, no, I can be good. You know what I'm saying? I'm yeah. working, that was my that was my favorite job. Yeah. Till this day, it's still my favorite job. Yeah. I was at a food truck. Food yeah. truck was paying me more money. And the benefit I had from working in the food truck, bro, mm -hmm. leftovers were mine. Mm -hmm. You know, they had hot yeah. dogs, burgers. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's so going to save you a lot of money on groceries and all these things. Yeah. I, I wasn't eating the best food. But I was surviving off that. Yeah. Excuse me. I was yeah. surviving off that. And you can get a lot of transferable skills too from these jobs that you just apply to your like to your what you want your real career to be. So like none of this is just yes, wasted bro. time. You're doing what you have to do to survive. Yes. It's not. But at the same it's time, not, you're yeah. also learning to like move forward in your career. Uh, you, you are. You're being better. Learn I'm doing this job for months and months and months and months. G 2019 is going by. I'm still working these jobs. Mm -hmm. My face, I get, I'm getting pimples because I'm around grease too much. Mm -hmm. And mind you, I'm the dude that never had no pimples in his skin ever. Mm -hmm. Clear. Mm -hmm. Pull up a picture of me on that. Pull up a picture on me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, I will. I have pictures. <laughs> <laughs> but I ain't chill. But, um, <laughs> but um, it's to say that like, people think like right now I'm in a job where I'm comfortable getting paid okay and enough for me to pay my bills, pay everything I need because I have more responsibilities now mm -hmm. and still have a little extra change for myself. But yeah. they don't know that I, they don't know that I worked three jobs. They don't know that I had no weekends. Yeah. I couldn't hang out with my friends and they felt uncomfortable asking me to hang out because dude got to go flip burgers. Yeah. Dude got to, yeah. dude got to go fry chicken wing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. They don't know that I had to go. I used to stand for 10 hours straight. Can't sit down. Ain't nowhere to sit down. You gotta sit down, take the phone, put it in the pad. People go to a concert mm -hmm. and they come back to you. Hey, can you unlock this for me? Because yeah. they don't want phones in there. So yeah. little things like this. But to be honest with you, these jobs got me places that I like, and I met people that I never thought I would meet. But guess what? Thank God, I still did what I did. March 2020, I get a job. Mm. I get a job Beginning. as a Peak COVID. The day New York got shut down. Damn. Listen to this. I get I interview, I get the job. They like me so much, it's like we want you. I said, yeah. could I can start next week. Yeah. March 16, COVID-19 shut down. Pew! Everybody go home. God bless me. You know what happened to me? Yeah. Since they just hired me, they're like, we're gonna allow you to be trained from home. Yeah, yeah. Now I'm gonna spend the next couple months at home. Yeah. Getting paid. Yeah. Watching anime. Yeah. Reading and learning. And then I'm chilling. I was like, wow, God works in a weird way. I think the point the point we're making here is sometimes you might have to do, like, you know, let's say even if it's not something bad, like a lot of these jobs are people have these jobs, but they're jobs, they're good jobs. But sometimes it's not where you saw yourself because you have mm -hmm. other objectives. But you might have to go through certain things just to get to where you want to get to. And that from our personal lives, at least, we tend to see that that affects people that look like us more. Thank you for watching the first installment of the Start of Success series. The second part of this conversation should be coming next week. Feel free to leave me comments to let me know what you thought and consider subscribing and liking. Yep. Thank you.